Right, today we're going to be talking about the spline tool. Um, it's a very powerful little tool that was added to view I don't know, a couple of versions ago. Um, and we can do all sorts of things with it. So, first of all, let's just look at it in its sort of most basic form. Um, so this is a new scene just using the default atmosphere. And all I'm going to do is just kind of click on my scene and you can see we can create a Bezier curve. So this is in its sort of create mode if you like, but we can also change over to our select mode and we can grab these points and lift them up. Okay, so it's kind of a three-dimensional Bezier curve if you like. Um, we can grab hold of the handles here and move them about just like we would in any other type of vector-based program like Illustrator, InDesign, um, even in Photoshop it's got a path tool. Um, now what we can do with it is pretty cool. Um, we can um, populate this with an ecosystem. So it pretty much works um, in two ways. We can either follow um, our, our line. So let's say we're going to populate with an ecosystem. We're going to edit this material and just set up a real basic ecosystem. Um, yep, plum trees will do just fine, thanks. Hit populate. Okay, and it's placing trees along our spline. Of course, if we go and increase the density, okay, we're going to get more across there. Um, say avoid overlapping instances and we'll go real high. Okay, so we should get a nice um, amount of trees all spaced along here. Kind of cool. Eh? Now it's also got another little mode here. See here it says populate on the spline. So at the moment what it's doing is it's just looking at the spline and it's almost like as if we used the, um, the, um, the eco painter. Okay, and you've just kind of gone like that. If you change this to plant um, populate on the spline Okay, let me clear this. You'll see that they actually, they actually go up and around. Okay, so if you're trying to make, um, I know, an asteroid field or something like that, you'd want to populate on the spline rather than the object that's below it. All right. So that's kind of cool. Um, we can also populate it as an area. So let's just, um, I'm just going to copy this material. So um, let's say we wanted to have this whole area full of trees. So I can go populate. Um, with an ecosystem down here in fill. I'm just going to paste my material into there. Um, yep, populate it now. Okay, and so now it's going to fill that area with trees. Um, actually, I've kind of got two things happening here. Um, I need to clear this ecosystem first because you can see I've still got this line of trees around here. So I'm just clear that one, right? Turn that one off. Go into here, edit material, and we'll populate this one. There we go. No. It should have filled that area. Kind of bizarre. That was very weird, wasn't it? Populate. There we go. Don't know what happened there. I must have been doing the other one still. Okay, so, so you can see that we're populating the area. So if you just had um, a terrain, okay, and you want to go right here's a little patch of trees, um, instead of going in here and painting a whole area or creating some kind of complex material with you know image maps dictating on where it's going to be populated you can actually come in with the spline tool and just go right this area here wants to be plum trees very cool notice here as well it's got to cut out other ecosystems so if we had an ecosystem already on our terrain um, let's say it was like grasslands or something you know and it was populating it with grass um, we could actually get it to cut um, out those ecosystems and pop populate these areas with just our new ecosystem which is also very convenient all right, so that's ecosystems. Let's have a look at what else we can do in here. So I'm just going to um, turn that off and I'm going to turn on the geometry. So what this can do is we can, obviously, I might just make this a bit thinner for now just because of the size. Okay. Um, so here we're creating a tube that goes across um, our spline. Um, sorry, the ecosystem's still there because I haven't cleared it yet. Um, and I can do all sorts of things. I can actually make this tube, um, you know, have a particular height. Okay, so I can make it so it's 20 centimeters high, uh, wide and 50 centimeters high. Um, I can offset this, so it might be okay. Well, if this was sitting on a terrain, um, I'll show you how, how we do that in a second. Um, maybe I want the tube. Maybe it's like a, a pipeline or something like that, and I want it to be half a meter off the ground. So I can actually add a Z offset. You know, let's say 1.4 meters. Okay, so it's going to put this pipeline um, 1.4 meters above the ground. Pretty cool. 
Um, we've also got different um, types of things we can do. So that's a tube, but we can do a road. Okay, so here's a, a 20 centimeter wide road. Okay, here's our road. Okay, and it's following that spline. It has two modes. Now this mode here, this free net twist, is meant to follow the curvature of the terrain beneath it. Um, I haven't had a lot of um, luck with it. So, um, I don't know if there's a problem with it, but this is meant to limit it, and it's meant to sort of follow the terrain. Um, we'll play around with this a little bit more in, in a second. Um, again, we've got this offset. You notice that it's going all over the show. Let's just change this back to Z. Okay, so you can see that this does actually allow us to lift the road. So maybe we wanted to do an elevated motorway. We could do that too. Um, which is very convenient. All right. Um, we've also got here, it says cobble. Cobble is actually, um, even though this height is not switched on, it actually does have a big influence. It's like a road, except it's got vertical sides. Okay, so quite good for you know, um, you know, a path or something like that, like a concrete path. Um, and we've got ribbon, which is just infinitely thin, like a ribbon. I'm not sure what you'd use that for. Maybe if you're modeling a ribbon. Okay, we've also got another control here, which is the width. And this is um, just using a filter, but we can do things like if we go and grab this point and drag it all the way down. So we're going to start off um, infinitely thin and work our way all the way up to the maximum width that we've defined. Okay, and we can do all sorts of crazy stuff like, you know, we could load in something, let's say, um, I think there's a random one in here somewhere. Where is it? There we go. Here's a random spline. Okay, so we're going to end up with these random thicknesses. Okay, which looks kind of crazy, doesn't it? It looks like it's all going up and down as well, which it's not meant to do. Okay, so that's dictating the width. It must be this height. Hmm. Let's change that back to road. Okay, it should have just been changing its thickness, but anyway. Reset that filter. There we go. Okay, so it's just going thin to thick again. All right, kind of cool, eh? All right, let's pop that. Actually, let's just go in here. It's kind of odd. I haven't seen. Okay. Yeah. See, so it's just changing its thickness now. It does look like it's lifting up a bit though, doesn't it? Hmm. Bizarre. Anyway, so we can reset that filter. In fact, it should actually be completely flat. So at this point here, it needs to be one to one. All right, there we go. All the way around. Beautiful. Um, we can, of course, apply a material to this. So let's just load in a material. In fact, we've got a road material here. Road with center line. I wonder if it'll orientate itself correctly. Probably not. Nice it is. Now that's because this has um, UV coordinates being associated to it. So the actual material, if we look at this, is actually... Oh, this one's actually a little bit more complicated than I was expecting. Let's have a look at it. I would have thought it's just a... Line. Oh, this is actually quite a cool little material, this one. We've got like a, um, yeah, it's very complex. We won't go there. <laughs> well, what's nice though is that it's actually following our road quite nicely. Okay, okay. Um, Alright, so what else can we do with this? It's looking pretty cool, but let's, um, let's just delete this one, right? And I'm going to create a terrain. So this is just a standard terrain. Just, and we're just going to pop this over here. Okay, and we'll just lift our camera up a little bit. All right. So this time, I select this guy, and I'm going to go frame selected objects. Um, in fact, I'll just go to here. Hang on. Sorry. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. So. Um, here we've got our terrain. So again, I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to add my points, but this time I'm going to go across my terrain like this. 
Um, and that's about it really. And you'll notice that, if I just don't click on here, that the spline I just drew actually went over the top of my terrain. Okay, so it actually picked up on what I was clicking on. So this leads me on to this third little option here. What this does is it will actually allow me um, to create a profile cut across any terrain that I select. In this case, my one terrain. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK on that. And let's just move this around a little bit. Okay, sometimes it's not quite so obvious. Until you hit render. And look, you can see a line being drawn across the top of our terrain. Okay, I think we need to make it a bit wider. And there's a couple other little settings that we need to adjust. So let's just cancel that. So let's um, go into here. So let's say, uh, make that about 15 meters. Now, my terrain at the moment, so this is a standard terrain, and it's only 256 by 256. Okay, so that means there's, you can think of it almost like pixels. So there's 256 points along this edge and 256 along this and it makes up a grid of elevation of, of you know elevated points so i'm going to bump this up to let's say 1024 by 1024 and we'll hit okay chin, 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 chin. this will make things slower of course all right hit okay and dun, 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 dun. we have a road being built across our terrain. Check it out. Okay, and that goes all the way across exactly where I clicked all the points. So that's pretty cool. So, what else can we do? Okay, let's just, I'm going to delete this one actually. Come on, let's escape and speed things up, won't it? Let's delete that one. This time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pathfinding tool. Okay. Now the pathfinder doesn't have a huge amount of control. But I'm going to add. Um, I'm going to add a point. Let's say here, and a point here. Right. Now I want to find a path to this from one point to the other. So if you notice this here, which is called pathfinding, um, this is how many the distance between each point. Okay. So it's basically kind of looking at a point and we'll assess where it can go. Um, I'm going to actually bump this up to about 50 meters just so we can see it. And hit OK. Cool. Okay, so what it's doing, you can see here, it's actually looking, and these points shouldn't be any more than 50 meters apart. Okay, and it's actually navigated away all the way around our site. So again, let's we'll bump this up to about 12 meters again and affect our terrain. And hit OK. So it's 12.9 meters wide. Let's just have a little look here. And hit render. And I can't see anything. Which seems a bit odd. Oh. Come on. There we go. Let's try that again. And hit render. There we go. And look, we've got a really cool little road that kind of finds its way quite nicely around my terrain. Isn't that awesome? Now, I've had mixed um, experiences with using procedural terrains, unfortunately. Um, we'll give it a crack just to see if we get a better result. But you can see this already looks pretty cool. Now this is kind of, you could kind of like think of this as almost like the earthworks if you like. Okay, and so what we can do on top of this, so let's just take the spline, I'm going to double click on it. But this time I'm going to add geometry and the terrain effect. So, chin, 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 chin. And we're going to do a road. Now, our road, or the, yeah, underneath it is 12 meters wide, or just over 12 meters wide. Okay, um, but remember that this kind of ramps off, so you can actually see we're actually only getting probably about, I don't know, 
maybe nine meters at the most maybe maybe even less so let's let's make this about six meters wide okay so that should get our road sitting quite nicely on our terrain and um, I'm going to give it a I'm gonna load that road material and it's quite nice road with center line excellent cool turn 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 hit ok All right, and let's hit render again, and we should see our road going around on top of it. Actually, I think we got it bang on, really. So that was 12 meters wide with a six meter road on it. So if you half the width of your road, or of the terrain effect, I should say, so if your road's half the width, it would look like it will work quite nicely all right um, a couple other little tools I'll show you just so you can see um, in fact let's do a nice render of this eh? let's um, go and load in a, a nice ecosystem into here um, I think there's Forest with green fields is a lovely one. Yep, it's um, actually well, let's just do a dynamic ecosystem and let's do a nice render so we can kind of see what this is going to look like. We'll do final quality render to screen 800 by 450 hit render. All right, so um, as you can see, my ecosystem isn't ideal. Um, obviously they're too small so I'd have to size them up um, which isn't uncommon and you'll probably find that if you make the um, instances 10 times the size um, everything would work fine um, which oops, not that sorry this which is definitely not uncommon it happens all the time um, and it's got to do with how they changed the units a while back so you probably find if you change it to point 0.1 that's the other way around was it 10 times as big? It'll be fine. In fact, let's have a look in here. Ah, oh, see, it's actually got an overall scaling being attached to it, which is actually making them smaller. So if we change that to 1 and this to point 0.1, you'll probably find it works just fine. Um, yeah, so the internal units of view used to be decimeters um, or 10 meters. That means that 10, um, let's say this tree was 1 meter in the real world. The internal units would have been 10 but the problem is of course is that when they change the internal units some of these would end up being 10 meters high so making this point one would change that 10 to a one again and everything would work I'm not sure why this has a funny scaling um, here but oh well. so now if we go preview it should do our dynamic ecosystem we should actually see something a lot more reasonable here we go so they look about right size. All right. Now, let's see, what else can we do? So we've got our, um, our dynamic, uh, sorry, our ecosystem working. We've got our, our road in there and it's all looking cool. Now I'm gonna change this, okay. Um, in fact, let's just create a new train. I might save this one actually. So let's go file, save as, I'm just gonna save this into, um, and then six three four zero. What a class we up to seven. Class seven. I'll do. I'll that one. Let's just do a new one. Now I'm going to do a procedural terrain this time. Okay, and I will say that this probably won't work. Go frame selected objects. Let's move this over here, right? Um. And I'm going to grab my terrain. Now you'll find that this bit usually works fine. So let's say we're building a little road that goes up like that. Okay, and then we'll go and put this on. So let's make it again about 12.9. You know, it's going to affect this procedural terrain. Hit OK. Okay, it's looking good so far. Let's just 
See what the preview looks like. Hmm. It's debatable. Okay. Now, we might still have to up the resolution. And, oh no, looking great. Excellent. Okay, now, because it's a procedural terrain, okay, we're getting a lot more resolution. However, now, what did I do? The, I did something the other day, and it just completely destroyed it. I think I, I think I tried to make a river by, instead of making it, um, make a flat surface, I tried to dig into it. Did not like doing it with a procedural terrain. And I think that's a lot to do with the way that editing a procedural terrain works. And we haven't really talked about this, and so but I will I will talk about it. Um, in here, what's happening is we've kind of got two things. So if I go and reset this terrain, right? I'm going to turn this off as well. Okay, if I reset it, you'll notice that, okay, I can still use my painting tools, right? Um, so let's say I go and set an altitude, maybe this area here. Okay, and I flatten off an area. This is actually a combination of things happening here. Okay, I've actually got a procedural terrain and um, a standard terrain kind of manipulating it. So that standard terrain is still being dictated by this resolution. So it's just important to understand how that works. And you'll actually see that, for example, um, I might need to make this even simpler, but you should still see we're getting a lot of the artifacts of a low resolution standard terrain, even though this is a procedural terrain. Okay. So it's kind of a doubling up. So you can see how you've got these like you know, sharp edges. Remember that it's a grid of heights. So sometimes you do get really odd things happening. And generally, what you need to do if you want to get rid of those effects happening, and you can see in here it looks fine, is to up the resolution. Okay, and if you up the resolution, it's not going to really make any difference to the procedural terrain. Because you can see we've got way more than 256 by 256 heights in here. Okay, but it will affect any of the edits you're doing to it. So we should see a much better result from from that. Okay, but it's still a little bit weird. And you can see, actually this has probably got a lot to do with that they've upped the res and it's kind of maintained what had been done earlier. Hang on, let's just, um, let's just reset this. And you'll notice as well, when I reset it, it doesn't reset the entire terrain, it just resets the edit that I did. Oops. <laughs> Undo that. Let's just go and do that altitude again. Okay, so that height. Okay, so now when it's done that edit, it should have done it at a much higher resolution. If we go and edit that, uh, re-render that. It's looking a lot better. It still has some strange artifacts happening. Um, you do sometimes get funny shadows in here, and the only real way of fixing it is somewhere you'll see this fast shadows. However, big warning, if you turn that off, yes, your shadows will look better, but it will take a lot longer to render. Okay, there you go, see it's fixed it. So that's that fast shadows. Um, so yeah, it's a last resort. Um, sometimes you'll find that you can go and put this boost up and it will speed it up a little bit. So it just basically means it's going to do the shadows but at a higher resolution. So you can see it's still faster, but we're still getting those strange artifacts. And every time you increase this to be better and better, Okay, mixed results really, isn't it? Okay, so it's still faster than switching this off. So if we can change it back to zero. However, yeah. Generally, it's only if you've got really extreme changes in your terrain. But sometimes it's unavoidable. You have to switch that off. All right. So um, let's just reset this. And I'll hit OK. And what else should we do to this? Um, OK, I just want to actually, I'm just going to delete this for a second. I'm just going to talk about these terrains again. Oh, sorry, the splines again. 
let's just create a spline here. One, two, three. Okay, let's go. Frame selected object. Actually, it's too big. Let's just do a new scene just because I'm lazy. I can't be bothered zooming all the way back down to where we were. Okay, click, 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 click. That'll do. And I'm going to put some geometry on this. I just want to talk quickly about some extra controls you have. Um, I can't remember when I brought this out, but you can actually um, change this to rotate. Oh, sorry, I've got to bring up the spline tool again. Okay, and if I select one of these points, you'll actually find that you can actually rotate um, each of these points. We should be able to. I kind of see it happening there. Oh, I'm doing it very good, is it? Let's just change this to that Fresnel. This thing's really weird, okay, but you can see how it's twisting. It's not doing a very good not a good job though, is it? Must be is it associated to this? Hmm. Should be rotating. It's doing a little bit, but yeah, not very impressive, though, is it? At least we're going to rotate that point. We can, it's not really doing what I expected it to do. Rotate that way. Rotate that way. Rotate this way. Sort of. Okay, but you can actually rotate these. And so if you want to kind of do a banked corner, you should be able to rotate this. Oops, we can also rotate the entire object, of course. <laughs> Notice as well, if you expand this, you can see each of these points. Okay, so if we get about here, there's that point. Again, if I change this to rotate. Ah, oh, there we go. I'm getting a bit better rotation now. Still not ideal, but you get the idea. Okay, and you can do the in and out points as well. Actually, you can't rotate them though, you can only move them. Alright. Um, and you can delete points as well, which is quite convenient. Um, another little trick. Let's just do another terrain here. Just size it right down. Cool. If we go and take a terrain, okay, well, let's say we added some points. Oh, excuse me for a second. Oh, sorry, I just sneezed. Okay, so um, if we go and take a point, um, what we can do is I've got my little path here, right? But I've gone straight over the top of my mountain peak, which is not cool because if I go and do something like a terrain change to this, Okay, it's going to drill a great big dirty hole through our entire terrain. So, I can actually go into here and say, well, actually, let's make that let's make that three meters. No, let's make it five meters. Every five meters, it's going to resample. It's going to look at the terrain heights, and then redraw my line. Oh, except I've already got this. <laughs> and let's just turn this off. And get undo. Undo. Yep. No. Okay, so here's my line. And I want it to go over the top. So I'm going to hit this um, resample every five meters, hit OK. Boom. OK, so now what it's done is it's kind of looked at all the points under there and it's gone over the top. So if you're getting problems of it um, getting buried or you, know, um, you haven't got enough points, you can do that, which is very convenient. Um, we can also um, break points. Hang on. I need to simplify this again. In fact, come on. Can't seem to. Oh, sorry, I got the wrong thing. That's why. Okay, we can break these points so they come down to a, a sharp corner. Okay, or they can be curved. Not really getting a very good resolution on this, am I? looks a lot more simple than it really is. 
aligned, broken. Come on. It's not letting me select the handles. There you go. This is where we grab these points. Okay, so if they're aligned, hang on. This is all going pear shaped. Let's just simplify things. So grab our spline tool. Okay, so if I go and select a point, okay, and I hit this broken, we should end up with the ability to move them separately from each other, okay, so we can get a really sharp angle. If that's switched off, okay, see they move together. Every time you go and grab one, if it will let you. Okay, so they move together, hit that, it'll break it, it means that you can move them independently. Okay, and we can realign them as well. Hit align, it'll realign it. So then we can go into here. This is actually a pretty standard feature. Usually, I don't know actually if it does it or not. Yeah, yeah, it does. Hold down the command key, you see, and I'm breaking it. Okay, moves together. Hold in the command key and I can do it separately. Alright. I don't think any of the other keys do anything. So yeah. Hold in the command key and you can grab these things individually and then make them come to a sharp point. Alright. Um, you can complete our loop. Okay, so if you want to make this one continuous loop, just hit that and it will join the last point up with the first point. Okay, so if you're trying to you know, fill this with trees, that could be quite handy. You don't need it, but otherwise it would just do, if you did fill with trees, it would do a straight line through here. Okay, and again, we can break that point, hold down the command key. Oh, come on. No, it's not going to do it. There we go, hold down the command key and it's breaking it. Okay, want to realign them, boom. All right. Now, another cool thing. Let's just pop into Illustrator for a second. And in fact, it doesn't have to be Illustrator. It could be um, ArcGIS. Although I'd have to, it might be a little bit tricky getting these out. What we can do is we can import vectors. So in fact, if we go and go to this, we can actually click on here and it'll let us import a whole bunch of vector files. Okay, and you'll see it says um, illustrate up to version 3.2, um, postscript files, which is generally what I've done, um, or EPS, um, but we'll, we'll spit out an illustrator file, and we'll, in fact what we'll do is we'll, we'll spit out a, um, a postscript file which has the extension .ps, and we'll also do um, an EPS EPS and PDF are very, very similar to each other. Um, encapsulated Postscript is more intended intended to go to print. So here we are in Illustrator. So I'm just going to go into Illustrator and um, it doesn't really matter what the size of the document is. Okay, and I'm going to do a letter in here. In fact, let's see what can we go. Let's do, hmm, oh, we can actually grab a wingding, I suppose, couldn't we? Now, let's just do a big at symbol, eh? And I want to make this much, 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 much bigger. Oops. Oops, might help if I highlight it first, eh? 72 point. And I want a much thicker font. Has this got like a big bold? Eh, not bad. That's even better. Okay, and now what I'm going to have to do is, I, at the moment this is just a character, so what I need to do is I need to expand its appearance. Okay, let's just select the whole thing, object, expand. Um, yep, expand the object field, yeah, okay, cool. So here, actually this might not work entirely because there's actually two paths. Because I've got this central bit in here as well. So it's probably not a very good example, but anyway. Um, let's just go object expand. 
I should be able to select the center one here. Let's just delete that. Okay, so here's my my vector. Okay, so it's going all the way around. It's one continuous shape. Um, also, let's just make this much bigger, just to because it's a vector shape. Of course, I can I can alter it and grab individual points and do whatever I like. I might decide actually I want this to you know, go out further. Bezier handles, we love them, don't we? Okay, so we can do whatever we like with this. File, export, chin, 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 chin. file, export, there we go. So under here, you'll see we've got a whole bunch of options. Now we're gonna go file, save as, sorry. File, save as. Okay, so we've got Illustrator, EPS. No, oh, there's no P postscript in there. No. Um, so let's spit out an, an Illustrator file. Um, you need to let's ignore this for a second. View class 2013, new folder. I'm just going to call this temp. And at. I'm going to go at 1. Hit save. So this is where it says what version you want to spit it out as. So if you remember, it was up to version three point something. So let's spit it out as version three. Hit OK. Yeah, hit OK. Cool. We can pop now back into Illustrator over here. Ah, oh, sorry, into View over here, and import that same file. Unable to read file. Blah 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 blah. Interesting. File. Save as. Let's just pump it out as an Illustrator file again, replace it. Let's just drop this down to like Illustrator. Ah, oh, sorry, Illustrator 3, sorry. That's what we want. Not CS3. Okay, go open. Unable to read file. That's probably why I've always used the EPS. Um, save as. EPS. Save. Again, we'll just bump it down to its lowest setting. We don't want any preview. Encapsulating. That looks cool. Okay. Okay. Drop into here. Let's see if we can load that one. EPS. Open. Turn, 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 turn. Excellent. And you'll see we've got a whole bunch of points here. And if we go frame selected object, there it is. Okay, and it's done a pretty good job of interpreting it. And so now we could go and say, right, let's go and populate that with an ecosystem full of plum trees. Populate. Oh, that didn't work very good, did it? Oh, because I had the wrong, wrong one selected. Oh, on this one. Come on. If this ever happens, just right click on it and you go object, edit object. Oh, that's a bit strange, isn't it? Come on. Turn, 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 turn. Hmm. There we go. Double clicked on it there. Good old view. Sorry, let's do that again. Populate with an ecosystem. Edit material. Actually, I should use fill, but yeah, let, let's do that. Fill. Turn that one off. I want to fill this entire area. Edit material. And load in our plum tree. Yep, okay. Populate. Ching. Check it out. I'm not sure where we are in the world. Oops. Oops. Come on, camera. Come over here. Whoop. And let's lift it up in the air. And we have a giant at symbol forest. 
<laughs> now, of course, if I had a terrain on that, this is kind of cool. So I could resample this, right? I'm not going to though. Okay, so here's my at symbol. If I go and stick a terrain underneath this, all right, and I go. I just need to repopulate this. So let's go edit material, clear that, populate it. Okay, because look at that. Because it's doing this populate, I don't have. Um, Oh, actually, where is it? Populate, cut out other ecosystems. Oh, populate on the spline. Oh, I suppose because I'm doing this one anyway. Um, it's not going to populate it up, elevate it up in the air. It's just going to look at whatever's beneath my cursor. And as you can see, I've got a giant at symbol now populating my terrain. Pretty cool. So if you've got CAD files, um, and you've got areas already marked out for where you want your trees and plants and things like that. You can just spit out the um, the vector files and then load them into view and then use those to um, plant those species onto your onto your scenes. So yeah, it's very very handy. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Oh, I might as well just say there's this road one as well. It's actually exactly the same. All it's doing is it's automatically switching on the um, procedural terra uh, the terrain effect and creating a road by default okay so um, it just saves you a little bit of time I suppose but it's actually no different to that one there okay and you'll see this all the time um, the lighting does exactly the same thing you can choose like a point light or a quadratic point light it's the same thing it's just got one of the settings changed um, 51 minutes what else do I want to talk about is it anything I've forgotten I don't think so I think we've talked about that in quite some detail all right I think I might leave it at that because this really does require you to experiment a lot okay um, a couple of little tricks um, one is using an ecosystem um, on your objects now this is pretty cool if you want to create for example a road that um, follows your terrain but is elevated so yeah, you know, like an elevated walkway so let's just create a little spline in here okay so I'm just gonna go across my terrain um, something like that right in fact I'm just gonna use the little pathfinder here just to I oh know sorry not that one sorry the Retopo, and we'll just make this about um, every 50 meters just so I get a nice spline running over my terrain. Okay, so let's just flick this around a little bit just to see how it's looking. Okay, looking pretty cool. So, what I want to do is I'm going to create um, a road that's elevated. Okay, so let's say yeah, about 9 meters, and let's make it about 12 meters wide. Oops, 12 meters wide. All right, so here's okay. It's a bit steep, obviously, but um, of course I could modify this. Maybe get rid of some of those points. Maybe I manipulate my terrain. But anyway, it doesn't really matter because um, what I want to show you is a cunning trick. What we're going to do is actually create a material here. All right, actually no, I'll create it. There's two ways I could do it actually. I could do it as an ecosystem on this material, or I could do it um, as an ecosystem here, which actually I wouldn't mind. Yeah, let's do it here. So I'm going to go populate with an ecosystem, and I'm going to go edit the material, and I'm going to create um, a object here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make columns to hold my road up. Sounds kind of tricky, doesn't it? But it's actually relatively easy. All I need to do is, there's actually a couple of ways of doing this, but I'm going to do it this way first. Is, um, let's see, I think there's some architectural elements in here. 
I need a column, you see, is what I'm looking for. Oh, I know where this one is. Um, one in the Boolean objects. Here we go. Not really the kind of column you'd expect to see, but that'll do. Okay, so here's our, our column, right? Now, if I populate this, see how it's um, populating across that, and all I need to do then is lift up. I'm going to show you two ways of doing this, actually, because there's, there's an advantage and disadvantage of this one. Okay, for one, it looks like I've got um, oops, too much variation in this. So let's just go and edit this material. Now, if you remember the scaling, if you change that to zero, and populate it, they'll all end up the same size. Clear, populate. There shouldn't be any variation now. Kind of looks like there is, isn't there? They're also become quite tall, which is possibly why I usually do it a different way. And what I do is I go, let's just switch that off. Actually, I'm going to have to clear that somehow, aren't I? So many annoying things. Let's just go reset material with it. Yeah, that'll do it. Pop over to this object, right? Okay, so here's my road. Now, I'm going to go into here and go edit material. Now, I'm going to do it so that this material is producing an ecosystem. And this isn't the most accurate thing. It's probably better for making, like, you know, sort of rickety bridges or something like that. But it's kind of cool. I'm going to add in my column. Okay, and if we go populate, it's going to end up on top of there, right? Which is not cool. So we want to go avoid overlapping instances. Get rid of this number here. Um, let's just reduce our density and hit populate. So we should end up with fewer of them. A bit of a pain in the bum, isn't it? Clear, come on. Why oh, isn't that working? Clear. Populate. Hmm. Yeah, if it doesn't work, just try again. Alright, so we're kind of getting there. Um, I'm going to actually go force regular alignment. Let's see if that works better. Hmm, this is being a bit of a pain in the bum. It's not like every time I've got to close it and open it again. Populate. Okay, I'm still getting far too many in here. So let's just drop this right down. No, it's still being a pain in the bum. Okay. So that's the right number that I want. Now, what I need to do though, is I just need to drop these below the surface. So if I drop these, I'm not sure how high those columns are, but it's probably about two meters by the look of it. Still doing this silly trick. Clear, populate. I should be able to go, oh sorry, I'm going the wrong direction, minus two I want, minus two meters. No, that must be, by the look of it, 10 metres, so that's cool. Let's go make that minus 10. Still doing a silly trick. There we go. Um, I just need to drop this down a bit. And I've got a cunning way... Uh-oh of putting pillars okay so it could be like you know logs or something like that so it could, could be quite cool if you had like you know some sort of log texture and then like you know a wooden deck and that sort of carry on and you can actually get it to um sort of hold up your um your bridge all right the final thing i'm going to show you is kind of cunning tricks on using this spline tool so i'm going to use techniques that we've just seen However, um, we're going to use it to create a railroad going over a bridge, right? So, let's see here. Let's go and put this terrain in here. So I've just got a standard terrain. 
Okay, I'm not really going to do much to it. I want to get a railroad track going around here, let's say. Okay, and it's going to span this little valley here. Let's just kind of... I might just make this a little bit more pronounced. So let's just um, go to altitude and invert this. I'm just going to drop the flow down so it doesn't get away on me. Okay, and we're going to... This is our, like a little river running through here, maybe. Okay. And so my railroad track's going to run around here go across here and then go around the side here. So this is going to be a little bit tricky because I need to actually um, make sure that I get this at the right angle and everything. So we'll hit OK. So now I need to see exactly the same sort of thing I was just seeing then. Unfortunately it doesn't have that coloured view in here which would be really nice if it did. But it doesn't. So let's go. We're going to go add, add, and I don't want to add too many points here, okay? I just want to add as few as possible. All right, so I've got a point on each side here, and then off it goes. So, let's just go into here and just see how I did. Yeah, looking pretty cool. Okay, so that's going to be my railroad track. And I'm hoping that's it. I think that looks all right. It's looking pretty cool, eh? I don't want it to be too steep, of course, but I can manipulate this, which is the whole point, really. Okay, so I need to create a railroad track. That's the first thing, which is going to be relatively easy because all I need to do is create a road, right? Um, it's going to be, let's say, five meters wide. And it's going to use a material that's already created for us. Um, so if I just load in, you'll see that the same place we found um, the roads, where is it, roads, 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 there we go, there's a couple of textures in here, um, and one of them is called rail tracks, and it's all driven by parameters, which is quite nice, so I'm just going to set up a couple of cameras here just so I can get around my scene quite quickly, okay, so here's my, my railroad track. Um, let's just manipulate that a little bit. This is I want to see the bridge running through here. Is that okay. Um, is that okay. I'm gonna create another texture as uh, another camera, sorry, as well. Yeah, new camera. Cool. And I'm gonna grab this camera and I'm gonna place it right over here so I can see my railroad track. That's more like it. Here's my railroad track going around. Okay, what does it look like over this way? Whoa, looking a bit vicious. Let's just grab this point here, if I can. I'll just drop that down a bit, eh? I might just need to grab that handle as well. Can I rotate around that point? I can. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, so let's just grab that handle. Which one is that? Must be point one out, I suppose. Yep. Okay, so that's our railroad track. We've got a bit of earthworks to do as well, but that's all right. So let's just grab this again. Just make sure we've got this texture looking good. How's that texture looking? Ooh, a bit ugly. That's all right. Let's bring up our material browser. Here it is. Here. Um, go to our published parameters. See, it's got 200. I'm going to bump that up to a thousand. See what that looks like. I think that's okay. Let's just get this camera into a better position again. Okay, we are right on top of the tracks. So we should be able to see that very clearly now. That's looking cool, except for my railroad tracks are too close together. So let's bring up those railroad tracks again, and oh, here we go, so let's make that 2.5 metres, let's see what that looks like. Alright, too far apart. I'm sure if I had the proper measurements I could get this bang on. Let's go 1.8. That's looking kind of realistic, eh? 
No, it's, it, it is a bit of a funny texture, this one, isn't it? So it doesn't actually go all the way through, which is kind of odd. Probably just got to do with the width, of, sorry, the thickness. Of my, um, where are we? Of this spline. In fact, if we change it to, yeah, go to this height, right? I'm just gonna make that point two. I just want this to look right. It might not look great from this angle, but I don't want to try and populate this entire thing with lots and lots of pieces. So that's gonna look fine. Although it should, I suppose, technically it should be a cobble, really, shouldn't it? So it should be five by twenty cobble, which means it will have horizontal sides to it. Which will hopefully, look a little bit better. Yeah, that looks about right. I don't know, except for now, that's interesting. I changed it to cobble, and we've lost our. Change it back to the road. We lost lost our tracks. There's obviously something that that texture needs that's generated from the road, but. Okay, so we're in action. It's looking cool. So, next thing is, we need to create our bridge. Now, there's a couple of ways we could do this. Oh, sorry, actually, I might leave that back there again. We could create another spline, right? That creates just like another road that puts an object underneath. That could be an option, but it is a fiddly one because you've got to try and get the heights and everything right. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create another terrain underneath this gap through here, right? So, what I want to do is go and create a standard terrain. I'm going to size it down seriously. Okay, so that it's just the size that I need this bridge to be. Whoops. Let's move them into place. I'm also going to try and figure out where needs to be it should be about here somewhere I think um, remember if I want to stretch this go to local coordinates so I'm stretching the object relative to itself all right that's about right I think a little bit of a kink on the end of it I'm probably gonna mess up our texture a bit um, let's just stretch this just a little bit more okay so, and I'm going to edit this terrain. I want to make it dead flat. I don't want any lumps in it. Just absolutely dead flat. Blop. Okay. So, normally what we do is we'd be, the spline would edit this terrain. However, what we're going to do is we're going to use this spline to edit terrain 2, which I'm going to rename. And we're going to make it much wider than that. I'm going to make it 12 meters wide. Okay, because it's like that. And I'm also going to change the shape of this because I want this to be straight edges. And I want to delete that point. Delete that point and delete that point. Okay, so this is like a cross section, if you like, through through my um, terrain, well, through my bridge, really, in this case. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. If we now go to main camera, we have a bridge. All right, don't worry about that bit. We'll fix that up in a sec. So that's all good. What else can we do with this? Well, I can now go and attach a material to this. I can go edit material, and I'm going to take. Hmm, actually, I'm going to load in a material, aren't I? Because there's one in here already. In the same folder called rail supports beautiful and we hit ok we're probably gonna have to play around with the scale of this a little bit you yeah, see so it's a bit fat still so let's make that um, about a quarter of that really let's make it 0.4 eh? let's see what that looks like Okay, we're getting a kind of a funny effect. It's because it's curving. 
which is unfortunate. It's kind of like, yeah, we're seeing a part of that texture. If this is a straight bridge, it would have been a lot easier. But there's not much I can do about it, to be honest. Um, I could try changing it to world standard instead of object standard. And I'll just get lucky, really, if it works. Yeah, it does. Okay, so what's actually happening is the, the texture is orientated to our world rather than our object. And in this case, it's kind of worked in a crazy kind of way. That's all right. I could probably, I don't know, maybe I could do, no, I, don't, I can't see any other way of doing it. Um, if it was a straight bridge, it'd be simple as. All right. So now that I've got that, um, I can manipulate my terrain on either side. Now, I could just, I'm going to show you two ways of doing this because what I really want to do now is take my terrain and I want to manipulate this terrain as well. Okay, now what will actually be happening is that the terrain underneath here is also getting manipulated and I'm hoping it will do but have a less effect. I probably won't be so lucky. See? So, that's no cool. Let's turn that off then. What I could do though is what well what I need to do is I actually want to manipulate the train on this side and this side separately from this middle section so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this spline all right and I'm gonna duplicate it um, I could go copy paste of course command D is duplicate and I'm going to delete so let's um, let's start off with this side here right so I want the first two or three points which is point two that's point two so I want to delete everything from point two to point five so I'm left with a little spline which in theory should be the same with our original spline but it only goes to there no it looks like I need point three as well dang undo <laughs> so is that point two there Oh, sorry, that's point. So I want to get rid of point three, through to point five. Delete those ones. Sorry, because I need I need that point there to stay there. Okay, perfect. And now this spline, and I could do this in a couple of ways. I could actually do exactly the same thing I did before if I wanted to have, especially if I wanted a different material. But I don't. I just want um, the same material, like as if the land had been sort of manipulated and pushed and pulled. I could probably use. Um, you know, some texture settings that, you know, if the, if the sides get so steep it turns to a gravel texture or something like that, or a rock, that might work. But, um, but yeah, we'll figure that out later. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to affect the terrain number one. I'm going to actually rename this. I'm going to call this bridge. Just so I can tell the difference. And now if I hit render, I should see my bridge and I should see that, that the track actually comes up and gets nicely manipulated. In fact, it should also cut through here as well. If it wants to render. Perfect. Okay. So if we just go and jump up on the bridge there, let's go to camera one. Now I could do the um, same for the other side as well, of course. Yeah, escape. Come on. If it does that, you can go up to here and click. Is it that one? Come on. There we go. All right, so let's just have a little look in that direction just to see how it's looking. Not too bad. I might have to just widen this effect a little bit because you can kind of see it's still flooding in. So it's not wide enough. But look, I've even got a road cutting coming in through here. It's awesome. Okay, so let's just go to the spline here. Oh, actually, I'm also getting a double up on my materials, which I don't need. 
Okay, so I don't need that one on this. And I might just widen this to about 20 meters. Cool, and can I reset this filter? Hmm, that's not good, is it? Uh, let's just load in a filter, hopefully. There we go. Road profile, road profile. Oh, that one there, right? Just so I get my curved sides off again. Cool, it's only affecting that, that terrain. It's 20 meters wide. Okay, and let's just kind of look at it from about that angle. Is that looking pretty good? I think so. Nice. So we've got our train track there, and it's running nicely through our valley. Um, there is, of course, lots of ways we could do this, but um, I think this is probably one of the fastest ways to do it, and you can really see we're getting some good, um, yeah, some good effect happening there. It's looking pretty awesome. Look at that, how it's even like, yeah, it looks like it's almost weathered. It's actually probably just the low res um, terrain we've got. But looking pretty cool. Once we start getting a bit of foliage and stuff in there. Okay, and so I could do the same to the other side. Okay, so piece of cake, just grab this one. Command D will duplicate it. Um, this time I want to delete everything from point zero to point two. Just should be all those ones. And then go delete. So it should leave me with point three through five. Excellent. Double click on that. Oops. The only disadvantage with this is, of course, that these have become disconnected. Whether or not there's a way of actually scripting this, you know, creating some sort of way of connecting all these points up so that they stay connected, I don't know. Um, so it is a little bit destructive. However, um, you could just make the same changes. It's not difficult, as you can see, to sort of recreate these. Make that the same shape as that one. What was it 20 meters, I think? Cool, let's go 20 meters up here. All right, turn that off because we don't need another train track. And hit OK, and we should have got that side working for us now. Seems a bit odd, doesn't it? It doesn't look like it's chopped through my terrain very well through there. Hmm, and that's probably because I don't quite have enough spline over there. So that means, which is a, yeah, see my spline actually finishes there. It's kind of annoying, isn't it? Hmm. So what I need to do is I need to get this to come around a bit further. Crikey. Well, luckily it's quite a wide bit of track. So I suppose if I grab this, what I really need to do is add an extra point. So let's just go into here. All right. Yeah, come on. Pain in the ass sometimes. There we go. And I'm going to add a point. Hopefully, it doesn't. I'm going to add a point to about here. Except, has it added it to the wrong end of my curve? Hmm. That's a bit annoying, isn't it? Yeah, that's point three. Point two is there. Guess that's actually going in the wrong order. So can I grab point three and move it? Probably not. I oh, guess I can. There we go. No, it's not liking that. 
That sucks. Okay, so we just got to delete that point. And I'm just going to have to manipulate this curve until it works for me. Well, it's all right, I suppose. So what I need is point zero, which is this guy here, to be over here a bit further. That's it. And then we'll grab this handle, oops, which is the point zero out, and we're just going to move that back onto the track. There we go. Yeah, see, so now we've got that moving again quite nicely. Let's just make sure we've got the right height on that. It's looking pretty good. Yep. Okay. And that's about it, I think. So if we get this camera back into... Where are we? Let's just get this camera looking back down into here. I think we should be sweet now. So we're a little bit buried still. We've kind of lost a little bit of our track. So what we need to do is look at spline number four and that spline. And we just need to look at them quite closely. Hmm. We haven't quite got it matching up, have we? So here's point zero, right? Point zero, point zero out. So if we just drop that down a little bit. Is it enough? Not quite. Okay, so we've got that all sorted. Those OpenGL ones don't always look bang on, so don't be too worried about them. Okay, and so now we can kind of get a nice angle here. Let me just zoom out just a little bit. You've got to remember what resolution you're going to be seeing this at anyway. So, um, yeah, 16 by 9, render final quality, render to screen. 1600. Actually, I'll just do this for now. See how that's looking. And then it's just a matter of applying some nice materials, maybe drop a train on there or something like that. Getting some trees in, the, in place. You can always hide little errors with some trees as well, which is always a kind of cunning, cheating sort of way of doing it. But um, as you can see, there's lots of different ways that you can... Um, use splines to make your scenes look um, yeah, really cool and they're pretty cool as far as modeling is, is, is concerned as well and and how you can kind of manipulate it if I wanted to change the shape of that bridge I could actually straighten it up um, quite easily um, I could also make it up in multiple pieces because I could take maybe the just the center piece you know that's creating that's pulling up that um, that bridge terrain yeah, so make it more straight that way. That would make it easier to apply that material to as well, which would clean it up. Um, yeah, or you could make it um, a texture that you know. The problem with our texture is because it's it's linear. You know, as it's being dropped over our curving terrain, it's going to make funny patterns. Um, if it was something like a gravel or something like that, it wouldn't have been an issue. Um, or something that's a bit more random, so you can't see the patterns forming. Anyway, I think that's enough about splines. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Anyway, till then, latest.